morning. Welcome back to my channel. This is Marla and I'm so glad you're joining me today. I have a mixed media card and we are going to create a faux rusted porthole. This is a longer video. I hope you stick with me. Here's a look at the products that I'm using. I have the A7 rope cover plate, the boat porthole, and finally the guiding light stamp set from Scrappy Tail Crafts. I'm going to jump right into some ink smushing. I have three colors, speckled egg, salvage patina, and tea dye. I also have a piece of Canson XL watercolor cardstock, and I am going to spritz that cardstock with water. I also spritz my ink with water. This is Distress Ink, and I try to break it up with my finger just so I don't get like those square impressions on this piece of cardstock. We want to start by building up our color. We'll do a little bit of the smooshing wet on wet. I'll use my Ranger Heat Tool to dry my card panel, and then once that panel is dry, I'm going to go dry to wet, and I'm going to smush it into the red, the wet ink. Now, the tea dye and the speckled egg, it actually creates this really um, green, you know how when metal gets that patina on it, it really creates that green appearance of that patina even more than the salvage patina. So I really like the way that those two colors mix together. So I'm not mad when I'm getting that grungy color on top. The important thing when you are building with smushing is to make sure that you dry in between each of your applications. That way you're getting a new layer on top. I felt like this needed a little bit more salvage patina, so I'll add some more salvage patina to the top of that, and then I'll come in with my porthole. This beautiful porthole die from Scrappy Tails is full of detail, which I'm going to accentuate later on. And once I get this die cut out, I do run it through my die cut machine two times because I want to make sure that it cuts through this heavyweight watercolor paper. And you can see that there are some extra pieces for that porthole, which we're going to use later. There's a circle, a wave die, and then finally there is a sailboat. But the porthole itself has some wonderful detail on the hinges and around the center or the outside circle. I'm trying to draw some of that out. I'm using a small detailed blending brush and some frayed burlap distress ink. Then I have a secret weapon, which is this sea sponge. And I am going to uh, just add little uh, area, add the ink to different areas of this porthole. You're not going to see it right off the bat. This really does uh, show up when you see it in person. But as I'm doing it here, I'm building up the color. I started with frayed burlap, added some ground espresso, and right here when I add the rusty hinge, you are going to see just how beautiful all of these layers match and come together to create that rusted look. But that's not good enough. We need to just draw out the beauty of the screws that have been put in there. So I'm using a small detailed brush and some rusty hinge again. And you see that it's a really bright orange against the weathered look of the rest of that porthole. Let's tone it down and we're going to use that ground espresso again. I'm using the same brush. I just kind of wiped it off on a microfiber cloth that I had sitting next to me. The hinges have a ton of detail, so I'm using that brush and that ground espresso to add to accentuate the detail that Sabrina has added to this die cut. As I may have mentioned, it does have some beautiful embossing and detail such as the screws and the hinges. There are two circles that go around that create the outer edge. Once I use the ground espresso 
around the outside edge, I will use this tiny brush and I'm going to add that detail and this is really going to come to life. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just covering up the white edges. So I had the frayed burlap and then I used the ground espresso on the white edges to make sure that it had that pop. And now you can see that porthole really coming to life by adding that little detail. I watched a video from Dawn Plus 9. I've done this um, faux aging with other products of metal but I've never used the sea sponge and she recommended the sea sponge to build up some color and I really liked the, that added effect. The sea sponges were pretty inexpensive. You can get them at Michael's, you can get them at Hobby Lobby. Um, and it's just a, you know, you just cut off a little piece. You really don't need to use the whole sea sponge. So here I'm going to go over this a second time, each of the areas, just to make sure that I have that beautiful detail. And then we'll start working on the rope. This A7 rope die is... I believe it's eight and a half by three and a half inches. I'm going to start with some antique linen. Again, I am using watercolor cardstock. This is Canson XL. Making sure that I'm getting the areas covered that I need because I am going to use that die to cut this out. Now I have a little bit of that tea die, a little bit of the frayed burlap and I'm going to break it apart with my fingers again. I'll spritz my panel. Nope, I guess I didn't. I thought I spritzed my panel with water, but I'm going dry to wet, and then I'll spritz my panel with water to get some movement. Now this one is not going to be uh, as detailed as the porthole was. It's going to be much more subtle, but I am going to draw out the beauty of the rope using a small blending brush and some gathered twigs. So I'm going to add just a little bit of antique linen this time, a little bit more of the frayed burlap and the tea dye. I'll dry it in between because as I mentioned, as you're creating layers, uh, if you continue to add water to it, it's just going to melt or mesh all of those colors together. What uh, allowing the panel to dry does is allow you, allow you to layer the color up uh, one layer on top of the other. So there's my beautiful die cut piece and here's my little secret weapon. This is a little blending brush that I have in my stash and I am going to go in between each of these detailed pieces of rope on the outer edges and you're going to see that it's really going to give it that aged look because you know that when a net has been in the water for a long time it doesn't stay that creamy beautiful color it does end up getting some of the barnacles and just some of the brown onto it and then we're going to I added a little bit of rust using the rusty hinge and the sponge again all right, that rope needs a background, so we're going to do a little bit more ink smushing. Again, we're staying with that aged appearance. So I have some Uncharted Mariner, some speckled egg, and some tea dye. And we're doing the ink smushing. I did wet my panel this time. I'll use my heat tool to dry it. And now I'm going dry on wet and we're going to build up that color again. This time we're adding that beautiful Uncharted Mariner, which is just a beautiful blue, and it's going to add a little bit of contrast with our porthole and then again with our rope. I needed a little bit of that rusty hinge in there. I thought it needed just that little pop of orange. I'll wet my paper after I smush it. And then I do use my, my microfiber cloth when I get the drips in the corners that I don't like. I just use that microfiber cloth to just kind of um, clean it up. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of that frayed burlap into this to tone it down. I'll spritz it with a little bit of water to get some movement add a little bit more and then I'll dry it with my heat tool. I want to add a little bit of spatter onto this so I'm going to put some water into my hand and then I'm just going to clap over it and let that water soak in. 
This is the remainder of the porthole. So I've die cut the circle off camera and then these are the detailed pieces. There are waves and clouds and the sailboat. And I'm going to use that uncharted mariner to add color to the water using the same process, again, building up color. So you'll see as I dry this right here that that color is actually going to dry back quite a bit. So I just tap it back into that uncharted mariner and it's going to give me another layer and a little bit more intensity of that color. I'll dry it back with my heat tool, smush it a little bit more, and then we'll move on to our circle. For the circle, I'm starting with speckled egg and I have a dry, nope, it looks like I put some water on that circle. Again, this is Canson XL watercolor paper. I'm going to add a little bit of tumbled glass once I dried that panel. I'll dry it again and then I'll smush it in both of the colors, blending them together and that's going to be my sky. So off camera, I am going to show you how I colored the sail on the sailboat, but basically off camera I went ahead and put this whole piece together to save a little bit of time. I'm adding some spattering with the Uncharted Mariner, adding a little bit of water to that. I'll heat dry it and now we are coming back to our panel. So this is our background panel. I want to add some detail and I'm using the compass from the Guiding Light stamp set and some tea dye distress ink. Now because it is distress ink I am not going to get a perfect impression. I didn't expect to get a perfect impression. I wanted to add a little bit of that nautical theme to this background. When you hold the card in your hands, it will peek out. The stamping does peek out. It's just a little bit more subtle and harder to see on camera. These are some seagulls and I used some speckled egg to stamp those. I made a mistake right there. My stamp is upside down, but we're going to fix that. So this is one of the sentiments and I just used that brown ink. I think that it was gathered twigs to stamp and to erase it because this is water reactive ink. That upside down stamping, I went ahead and spritzed it with water. I kind of used my finger to erase it and now I just need to add some color back to that area. So I'm just taking that ink that I used and I'm doing that ink smushing. You can see that it really has um, the other areas of the card are not as washed out as this. I'm going to add a little bit of that rusty hinge and then I'll stamp the right way with my sentiment. Use some water to distress it and then I'm going to dry it. Now the finished card is going to be eight and three quarter by three and three quarter inches. So off camera, I went ahead and I die cut a card panel to that size using craft cardstock. I took a piece of green cardstock and added it over the top and that's going to be the matte layer for my background. Here is the sail as I mentioned. Uh, I'm doing that smushing again using the rusty hinge so we have the full cohesiveness with all of the colors throughout this card panel. I'm going to layer up my rope on top of my background and when I show you the close-up at the end of this you'll be able to see the stamping in the background and see how that uh, Added stamping really does add interest to your background. I popped up the sail on the sailboat using some foam tape. I added the clouds. I didn't color them. I simply die cut them from the Canson XL watercolor paper. So it has more of a yellowish instead of a white white, which blended really well with the rest of the distress card. And there's that card panel I was talking about. We're going to add this to the center. That will give us a quarter inch reveal. I used the Guiding Light um, stamp set 
and I heat embossed my sentiment using some Brutus Monroe gilded embossing powder. I added the sentiment a little more left of center and I used the same green cardstock that we've matted our panel onto. I added the sentiment left of center because I wanted to um, use some of the images from the guided light stamp set so I took some craft card stock and three of the stamps that are in that set. I heat embossed the what I'm saying is a map in the bottle because my sentiment does read I'd be lost without you uh, as well as a starfish and a shell again using Brutus Monroe gilded embossing powder. I'm adding some eighth inch foam tape to my bottle and I'll tuck my starfish in behind that and then I'll add a little bit of foam tape to the seashell as well. I just like the idea of using that craft card stock because it was what my card base is made out of so when you open up the card again it's adding a little bit more of that cohesiveness to the entire composition of the card having the craft card stock when you open it is just going to tie everything back together. So I added my sentiment to the bottom third of my card and then I will add my porthole to the upper third of my card. The um, A2, the A7 rope, you certainly could use it on other size cards, maybe having a quarter inch reveal on each of the sides and using it on an A2 card so all you would need to do is just cut it down a little bit. And these products from Scrappy Tail for this release were just absolutely amazing. I am going to link a card that I created. I created this beautiful beach scene using um, her beach die and her seagull dies and then of course I did use this sailboat as well and I think that just all of the products work so well together. I would have loved to have had the whole release. I don't have the whole release but I would have loved to have had the whole release because everything is absolutely stunning. Once I get this on there straight that will complete my card for today. I want to thank you so much for joining me. All of the products that I've used will be linked in the description box below. When you use those links, it does help me as a YouTube creator. It just helps support my channel because I do receive a very small commission for that. Here's a close-up. You can see that beautiful stamping. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks for joining me.